Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. Since the dawn of mankind, humans have always appreciated three things. Nutritious and delicious food for sustenance, companionship and love for the spirit, and anime girl Kamen Rider Firefly Type 4 Strategic Assault Mech Robots! This video was filmed on the Creator Experience server, name no longer pending, and although unlikely, things are subject to change. Honestly, without Sam, Firefly to me is aight, but with Sam, oh my god. And since I find her to be one of the coolest, I mean hottest robots around, I've went and actually done tons of calcs for her. Firefly is an incredibly free-to-play friendly character and a rather powerful break damage focused 5 star fire destruction character. Her base stats are as follows and she gains 5 speed, 37.3% break effect, and 18% effect resistance through her traces. It is notable that she has the lowest amount of HP in the entire game but also the highest amount of defense which actually ends up making her a pretty durable character, especially once we dive into the rest of her kit. In this video, we'll go over how Firefly's kit works. Her stats, relics, light cones, eidolons, and pull priority. Multiple free-to-play friendly showcases where I also yap about her pros and cons, and a zero cycle clear, and well, you know, the build that it took to zero cycle clear, and finally, my opinion on Firefly. Let's take a look at Firefly's kit. In combat, Firefly fortunately doesn't really use her waifu form, but instead she uses the Type 4 Strategic Assault Mech, aka Sam, starting off with her basic attack while she's not using her ultimate. It's extremely unremarkable and you should only use it for a free skill point or if it generates just enough energy to activate her ultimate, which by the way it generates just 20 energy like almost every other basic attack in the game. Up next is her skill, and let's take a look at it outside of her ultimate first. Her skill costs a skill point and her skill is actually pretty funky as it generates a fixed 60% of her ultimate's energy. It also costs 40% of Firefly's health. Considering her ultimate costs an insane 240 energy, her skill generates a whopping 144 energy. Not only this, but her skill also advances her forward by 25%, so if in the unfortunate situation where she needs two skills to fully charge her ultimate, then this advance forward will speed it up a bit. All this finally builds up to her ultimate, Firefly Type 4, Complete Combustion. Besides its epic animation, Firefly advances forward her action by 100% and her skill and basic attack become enhanced. Her ultimate does a lot of stuff, including increasing her own break efficiency by 50%. This allows her to break her enemies much more quickly. It also gives Firefly 60 speed and 20% additional damage to her own break damage via the vulnerability multiplier and a countdown timer for her complete combustion state appears in the turn order with a fixed 70 speed or 142.857 action value. Because her complete combustion state has 70 speed, if Firefly has 210 speed, which is easily obtainable, which I'll talk about later, Firefly will attack four times total in her first complete combustion state. Now that she's in her complete combustion state, that's where the fun begins. With her enhanced skill, Firefly Type 4 Death Star Overload. Death Star Overload costs a skill point, heals her for 25% of her HP, and more importantly, deals 30 base toughness reduction to the primary target and 15 base toughness reduction to adjacent targets. And yes, the in-game toughness reduction displayed is three times smaller than what most people have been using for theory crafting since the game's release, but I'll be referring to the in-game toughness reduction values. To put this into perspective, 30 toughness damage from her skill to the primary target is equivalent to Zila's single target ultimate, so it is a lot of toughness damage. And on top of this, thanks to the 50% increased break efficiency, she now deals a colossal 45 toughness reduction to the primary target. But wait, that's not all. Death Star is also guaranteed to apply fire weakness to the primary target. And since this is a blast attack, even if adjacent enemies aren't weak to fire, they still take 55% of the expected toughness reduction for the adjacent targets. 
It is important to note that the fire weakness that's added via her skill does not reduce the enemy's fire resistance. As we can see, Firefly is a fire-breaking machine. Literally, because Sam is a machine. Oh right, I almost forgot to mention that Death Star deals some nearly negligible damage scaling off her break effect stat. While the raw fire damage that she deals via Death Star is laughable, fortunately thanks to her major trace, she also deals super break damage versus a broken enemy. 35% or 50% super break damage depending on her break effect stat. We can see based on this that we really want Sam to have 360 break effect or more. Now, Super Break basically does break type damage based on your break effect and toughness reduction against a broken enemy, but this isn't going to be a guide on Super Break. Basically, her Death Star deals a lot of toughness reduction to up to three enemies and a decent amount of break damage. A really quick overview on Super Break is that its damage scales off of break effect, toughness reduction, defense shred, resistance shred, vulnerability, and only works when you hit a broken enemy. Notably, it does not scale off of crit or elemental damage. Now, during complete combustion, her enhanced basic attack, Firefly Type 4 Pyrogenic Decimation, is actually useful for finishing off a single target. It deals more toughness reduction than the usual basic attack, and it also generates a skill point, heals her for 20% of her HP, and yes, it does deal super break damage to broken enemies like her enhanced skill, Death Star Overload. A really interesting trait about Firefly is that both her basic and her skill do not generate energy during her ultimate. So Firefly needs to rely on other ways to get her ultimate up, which I will talk about later. We also have her passives, where she gains up to 40% damage reduction depending on how low her health is, and during complete combustion, Firefly also gains 30% effect resistance, which brings her up to 48% effect resistance thanks to her minor traces. She also starts every battle with at least 50% of her energy, so this way she can always get a one turn ultimate because her skill generates 60% of her energy. On top of that, when her energy hits 100%, all debuffs that are currently on her are dispelled, and she has another major trace which, for every 10 attack over 1800, she gains 0.8% break effect. Finally, we have the coolest technique in the game, as Firefly flies to the heavens to then come crashing down onto those below. Not only does it apply fire weaknesses to all the enemies irrespective of effect hit rate, this technique is unique and incredible because it also works across multiple waves as well, and it deals a solid amount of toughness damage right out of the box. As we can see, Firefly enjoys spamming her skill as much as possible, either for generating massive amounts of energy or dealing massive amounts of break damage. She's another DPS character that really enjoys spending skill points at Eidolon Zero. Now a quick tip for her is that due to the advance forward by 100% when you use her ultimate, I do recommend using turn-based buffs, such as the Watchmaker's 4-piece relic set, after she has casted her ultimate and after she's finished advancing forward her turn and during that turn to extend certain buffs durations like the Watchmaker's. Another incredible trait about Firefly, because her complete combustion state has 70 fixed speed, when you finish a wave off, complete combustion actually restarts its action value in a new wave, and you get another round of, well, generally three attacks. This makes Firefly incredible against multiple waves of enemies, and she ends up having very little downtime in many situations. For talent priority, you want to level up her ultimate, then her skill, then her talent, and you honestly don't really need to level her basic attacks, but you can, I guess, if you want. Okay, before we move on to her build and stuff, we need to talk about Super Break and Harmony Trailblazer. Harmony Trailblazer is basically 100% necessary for Firefly as of her release. And unless we get another Super Break enabling character to replace Harmony MC, it will remain this way. Firefly herself doesn't actually do a whole lot of damage or break damage, but because of her comically high break effect stat, as well as her very high toughness reduction, she is the most compatible character with Harmony Trailblazer's Super Break. Firefly, on her own, only dealt a pathetic 15,019 damage with her own Super Break in this example. This is because she has under 360% break effect here, and she has minimal buffs. However, let's see how much she does with Harmony Trailblazer.
111,587 damage. Yep, these two truly are a love story in Honkai Star Rail. Very lore accurate as well. Harmony MC in this example increased Firefly's damage by 526%. Absolutely wild. We can see two different Super Break numbers here. This smaller 25,857 Super Break actually comes from Firefly's kit and her major trace, whereas this 82,744 Super Break comes from Harmony MC's Ultimate's Super Break. That's right, the majority of Firefly's damage actually comes from Harmony MC, but she's also the only character to be able to pull this off. Looking at this pie chart, we can see that Firefly's raw skill damage made up only 2.7% of the damage. Meanwhile, Firefly's Super Break from her Major Trace made up 23.2%, and Harmony MC's Ultimate Super Break, which is triggered by Firefly, did 74.1% of the damage. This is because of the nearly 90% break effect that Harmony MC provides to Firefly, along with Firefly's Super Break now dealing the 0.5 times multiplier, and Harmony MC Super Break actually having a special 1.2 to 1.6 multiplier, depending on how many enemies are on the field. Anyway, we can see here that the majority of Firefly's damage comes from Harmony MC's Super Break. So moving forward, I will be including Harmony MC's buffs in the calculations, which is the perfect segue to talk about some math in her build. Let's start off with her stats and substats. Firefly, like the rest of her kit, is very interesting with her stats as well. Because of her major trace where she gets 0.8% break effect for every 10 attack above 1800, this means that she also does scale somewhat reasonably off of attack as well. And she's highly incentivized to equip attack percent main stat pieces on both the body and the sphere in order to start benefiting from this passive. This means that her main stat allocation for pretty much everyone should be attack percent body, speed boots, attack percent sphere, and break effect rope. And you might be curious as to why crit body and elemental sphere are not worth it. Well, let's go back to this pie chart again. Crit and elemental damage only affect the skill damage portion of Firefly's damage, and they do not affect break damage in any way. And as a reminder, the skill damage made up a measly 2.7% of her damage output against a broken enemy. As such, attack percent is far superior to crit or elemental damage, as it still boosts her break effect by a bit, thanks to the aforementioned major trace. Next is her speed breakpoint, which is 210 speed. With 210 speed, Firefly is able to move four times when she casts her ultimate and during her ultimate's duration. Fortunately, reaching 210 speed is very easy to do, thanks to the 60 speed provided by her ultimate. If you have no external speed buffs, and assuming you're using speed boots and the two-piece forge of the Kalpagni Lantern, you just need a reasonable 5 speed substat rolls, or 150 speed on your character's page, to reach 210 speed. Now, if you have Ron May, then Firefly literally needs zero speed substat rolls with the two-piece forge of Calpagni Lantern, or about three substat rolls without the two-piece forge of Calpagni Lantern, to hit 210 speed. Sweatier players will also be able to get five total turns with massive speed buffs, the dance, 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 and other shenanigans, but to keep things simple for most of us unsweaty players, just target 210 speed with the above recommendations. And knowing all this, we can look at the recommended substats now, which are speed until you hit 210 speed breakpoint, then break effect is the next best one, followed by attack percent. And I guess after that, effect res and flat attack are reasonable as well, although I would not prioritize those in any way. I included a crit rule as well just to demonstrate how meme-worthy of a boost to her damage output crit stats are. Now for four-piece relics, she has three main choices. The four-piece Iron Cavalry Against the Scourge is by far the best option providing 16% break effect and 25% defense ignore. This set is even better when used with additional sources of defense shred, provided you don't go over 100% defense shred. Then the two-piece Thief of Shooting Meteor is a solid option as well, although it does do around 10% or even more less damage. And while it does provide some energy, because of Firefly's massive 240 energy cost, the three energy per break isn't as impactful as it could have been. Finally, you can mix and match various two-piece sets with even double two-piece attack sets performing better than I actually personally expected and are absolutely usable until you farm a good four-piece Iron Cavalry. 
As for the two-piece relic set, the two-piece Forge of the Calpagni Lantern is definitely the best option. While the damage is basically the same as the Talia's, the Forge provides 6% speed, which is equivalent to 2-3 to three speed substat rolls. And of course, as mentioned, the two-piece Talia's is a usable choice, and surprisingly, the two-piece Space Ceiling Station and other attack percent sets aren't actually that far behind in terms of damage, so you can consider using those while you farm for the two-piece Forge. Next are Firefly's Light Cones, which, shocking news, her signature Light Cone is her best option! Who would have thunk? It performs roughly 17% better than her next best option, which is the free-to-play friendly Hurt to Shop Light Cone on the Fall of Aeon. I am assuming four stacks for on the Fall of Aeon and the fact that she's broken an enemy, but these are fairly easy conditions for Firefly to meet. On the Fall of Aeon is surprisingly good because it provides a ton of attack, which actually does provide a lot of break effect for Firefly. As for the other light cones, honestly nothing stands out, but here are some usable ones listed in the chart for if you need your On the Fall of Ion on another destruction characters for your Memory of Chaos run. As for Eidolon's and pull priority, this is actually a bit tricky. Both her Eidolon 1 and Super Musician 1 light cone are great options. Personally, I prefer bigger numbers and I would choose her S1, but only by a bit. With the teams that I ran with Firefly, I didn't really have any skill point issues as her supports tend to be skill point positive. However, for some sweaty players willing to perfectly speed tune with Branya or something, Eidolon 1 allows for some more creative play and additional turns with Branya and also provides Eidolon 2 access in the simulated universe. Speaking of which, her Eidolon 2 gives her a free turn on break or kill, which is extremely powerful, and her Eidolon 6 is absolutely cracked. Next, let's talk about teams. As mentioned earlier, Harmony MC provides an absolutely bonkers amount of damage to Firefly, to the point where I would say that Firefly is nearly unviable without Harmony MC. As such, Harmony MC should always currently be on Firefly's team. This leaves two slots, with Bronmei being the next best option. Bronmei provides an additional 84% damage increase. But do not fret because other options besides Ron May are still strong such as Pella, Gwenai Finn, and Silver Wolf. I personally had a lot of success utilizing Pella and Gwenai Finn in my more free to play -ish friendly runs. As for the sustain slot, Gallagher is overall my most recommended choice. As he not only provides 12% vulnerability to break damage, he himself deals a lot of toughness reduction, which will help you break enemies much more quickly. I do recommend Abundance characters overall a bit more than Preservation characters, because they are able to use the free to play friendly quid pro quo, which you can funnel some energy with specific speed settings, as well as specific rotations for Firefly to help her get her ultimate up again. Another abundance option is Huo Huo, and although I didn't find too many issues with Firefly's ultimate downtime, Huo Huo does provide a ton of energy for Firefly, and she provides a small amount of break effect via her attack buff as well. Still, I think Gallagher is the overall much better choice because Huo Huo barely breaks the enemy gauges, and if you're able to break the enemies much faster with a character like Gallagher, Firefly will be doing much more damage. Anyway, all other Abundance and Preservation characters are perfectly usable for keeping your team alive, but Gallagher, again, is my go-to choice. A couple more niche and interesting support options are Robin and Branya. Robin's full team advance forward will give Firefly an additional turn during her ultimate, but interestingly, the flat attack buff that Robin provides does not increase Firefly's break damage. I'm not sure why, as Huohua's attack percent actually does increase break effect for Firefly, but it is what it is. Branya can also be used with an Eidolon 1 Firefly, since Firefly will then be much more skill point friendly. Now, neither of these advanced forwards are my personal go-to recommendations, but I can definitely see them being powerful options with some unique creative setups to dominate the enemies with Firefly. All right, let's take a look at some showcases for Firefly, starting with a more free-to-play friendly-ish setup. Now, for this one, we have the On the Fall of Aeon, as well as, you know, just the standard um, set pieces that I recommended throughout the video in the build section, and of course, she is at Eidolon Zero. I try to keep her stats pretty reasonable, but next we actually have Gwenai Finn, who I actually think is an underrated character when it comes to being used with her. And here I'm just using this um, wind set to advance her forward, basically just to give her more actions instead of you know using a speed set. Then we have Harmony Trailblazer with the dance, 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 as well as the four-piece watchmakers. 
Now, I think for this setup, I didn't go for a double four piece watchmakers, but instead I went with um, Gallagher with the quid pro quo, as well as the four piece passerby wandering cloud. Now, unfortunately in this run, I don't believe I properly used the quid pro quo setup in order to actually guarantee to give Firefly energy, but I don't really think it was a big issue for this specific Memory of Chaos. This is a new Memory of Chaos, and this is the first part of the Memory of Chaos. And this one is extraordinarily favored towards Firefly as usual. I mean, they always love to give these super, super um, favorable Memory of Chaoses to the banner character. And in this case, Firefly literally gets an extra turn every single time that the Trotter appears, which is very, very overpowered for her. Now, one thing you'll notice about this team is that Gwen Finn I found was very helpful for when it came to actually kind of breaking the enemy's gauges in order for, you know, obviously for Firefly to do more damage because what people might not expect is that you doing more damage to the enemy gauges actually typically leads to Firefly doing more damage quickly to the enemy because that way Firefly has less toughness bars to chew through herself and in this case since the enemies are weak to fire or you know Firefly can make them weak to fire Gwen Finn is one of the better options for actually breaking fire gauges for free to play players that don't have Ron May and that don't you know uh, well yeah I guess uh, Gwen Finn is really the only other option besides her and Gallagher so yeah, um, otherwise Pella is a decent choice if the enemies are ice weak as well. But we can see here that, you know, obviously Firefly is doing a lot of damage and sorry, I'm just kind of yapping right now. And this is on 150x speed because when it comes to free to play friendly runs, they take much longer. And I don't know, personally, I don't have the attention span to kind of sit through um, like six minutes of, you know, normal speed gameplay footage as I just kind of watch uh, these showcases. So it's on 1.5 XP, which is why it seems a little bit fast, but we can see here that finally, for the first time, a Firefly actually lost her ultimate uptime, and now she is back in her normal Sam mode. And after a single skill, we should be able to, I'm not sure why I popped Gallagher's thing there, but you know, whatever, not a big deal. Um, but we can see here that I used her ultimate thing right there and uh this actually works out because then we do funnel the quid pro quo energy to firefly like that unless it went to gallier himself actually i'm not entirely sure we'd, ha <laughs> we'd have to double check that but either way um here we go so uh let's see i did want to talk about how firefly does have a weakness that is a little bit um i don't know maybe not talked about but it is without Ron May, she actually has a bit of an issue when it comes to what I would call break up time. And this is when the en for how long the enemy is broken for. And because fire break doesn't apply like speed downs or massive delays to the enemy, what this ends up leading to is the enemy's actually recovering quite quickly. And you know, Ron May obviously delays that significantly with her, you know, flower thing, whatever it's called that delays the enemy's break and keeps them in broken state. So that means that you actually have to end up re-chewing through and punching through the toughness gauge of the enemy with Firefly, especially if you don't have Ron May, which is why for free-to-play situations, I that's a big reason why I like Gwen Finn, because she can help with that situation. Now, of course, that goes without saying, Pella is also an incredible teammate for her for free-to-play players, and Silver Wolf is a decent option as well. So just like that, we managed to three-turn the top half memory of chaos with this free to play firefly setup now let's next take a look at a zero cycle that i did where the stats are a bit more min maxed and we have a lot more break effect on her as well as 159 speed now i believe generally if you want to go for more zero cycles in the future 165 speed will be an important benchmark however because we have the dance 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 and because we also have the free trotter for free turns this is not as necessary as you'll see in the setup we have watchmakers on ron may as well as dance 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 on ron may which is interesting because you'll see that on harmony trailblazer we have ron may's light cone as superimposition one the reason for this is because Har harmony trailblazer will actually transfer some of the break effect that is on that light cone onto um, Firefly, because Ron May doesn't have a break effect sharing passive, unlike Harmony Trailblazer, who does. So that's why, you know, it's a bit unexpected why you see that on her. And oh, I also brought Gwen Ifin as well, because you'll notice in this specific run, 
The extra fire break was actually critical to zero cycle with an E0 S1 build. Now, of course, if we add some Eidolons or, you know, whatever nonsense, um, this would be a lot easier. But I did want to show you guys, like, kind of the minimum investment that I found to zero cycle. Uh, this memory chaos. Now, this memory chaos is the second half of memory chaos. So it's the new one and the second part of it. And you'll see that I don't actually Firefly Ultimate immediately because I want to build up resources for the characters. And Firefly only needs three attacks to actually wipe this entire chamber out. So hence why I'm not really in a big rush to actually enter ultimate state. But now we can see that I built that free skill point as well, which is a nice little trick is if it's right before Firefly's turn and she has her ultimate, you can just go ahead and utilize her basic attack to get a free skill point. We can see here that we have these two enemies left and Firefly managed to actually go three times right before the end of that thanks to her enormous speed values as well as the Trotter. And the Trotter exploding immediately upon spawning means that Firefly actually gets two instant turns, which is really interesting. Basically, she has her turn, then she has an instant resurgence. So that's kind of a neat little quirk about this uh, Trotter that is, you know, egregiously designed to benefit Firefly. And honestly, that's kind of a... I gotta be completely honest, it's a bit of an issue I have with this game is that the showcases for these new featured five-star characters is always, like, extraordinarily biased towards that featured five-star character. But it is what it is because, you know, like the patch that you get them, they're able to zero cycle at like easier S1 investments. But then afterwards, you know, literally the next patch, they start to take like three to four, maybe even five turns to actually zero cycle. And nothing else changed besides the fact that the blessing itself has changed. So, yeah, it's just kind of um, kind of the way that Honkai Star World does things to showcase new characters. But either way, I thought the zero cycle was cool. You can see there that Gwenai Finn's toughness damage came in extraordinarily important and valuable here because that way it managed to allow Firefly to chew through their toughness bars in a single attack and finish them off with one nice grandiose nuke. Now let's go back to the free to play showcase, a free to play friendly team, but this time in the new gameplay event, Apocalyptic Shadow. Now Apocalyptic Shadow is interesting because Honestly, I gotta be I gotta be completely honest. It's just memory chaos with a different, you know, enemy basically. And some slightly, slightly different gimmicks. Like there's probably gonna be some unique, you know, like gimmicky thing. In this case, when you defeat the add-ons or whatever, the boss itself will get that as an elemental weakness. So, you know, just like um, kind of an extra gimmick. It's it's like pure fiction, but I would say more like memory of chaos with more gimmicks than a memory of chaos typically has. And you also fight like kind of a bosses, like in this case you fight Kakolia and she has a different attack pattern. So yeah, just like a slightly different version of Kakolia, slightly different version of Argenti. And you know, uh, it's another race against the clock. You can see the remaining action value on the right. And in order to three star this one, you need that remaining action value to be higher than um, I believe 1300 on each side because you need 6,600 points total and you get 2000 just from clearing it and you get however many remaining action value as additional points. So because of that you need 2600 total action value remaining on both sides. An average of 1300 action value remaining on each side in order to 3 star it. Now we can see here that uh, Firefly is clearly extraordinarily great for this. and. I think Pel Pella here will increase Firefly's damage by a lot more than Gwenai Finn does. And in the previous Memory Chaos, damage wasn't really the issue, but it's more so breaking the gauges fast enough, which is why I found Gwenai Finn to be preferable over Pella for that specific situation. But we can see that free-to-play Firefly is pretty solid. And yes, while Ron May is, you know, by far the best support for that Harmony support slot, um, Firefly, in my opinion, felt extremely good even without Ron May, although I did feel a clear and significant difference with Ron May. But don't fret for those of you wannabe Firefly enjoyers that don't have the resources to also get Ron May as well. I think that she is perfectly fine without them. We can see here that, you know, just uh, now that the enemy's broken, because the gimmick of this one is another gimmick of it is triggered when the boss character is broken, so obviously that's going to highly, highly favor a break team like Firefly as well as, you know, a break character like Boot Hill. These characters are going to absolutely shred through this new gameplay mode 
Um, because, yeah. So, uh, what else do I want to talk about Firefly? I guess there's a little bit more. Um, for Harmony Trailblazer, since Firefly is such a dependent character on Harmony Trailblazer, more so than literally like any other characters dependent on any other character in this game, you know, like most other supports maybe like double, at best triple the damage output that a character can output, like maybe, I don't know, like, I'm trying to think, like maybe Branya and Blade, right? Like maybe that situation where she over doubles Blade's damage, but in this case, um, do I remember, if I remember correctly, my earlier in-game demonstration showed it was over a six times benefit. <laughs> so, you know, you're not even, you're not even playing with the character if you're not running Harmony MC with, um, Firefly. And that's just, you know, pretty crazy. But this also means that for areas where enemies are not weak to imaginary, there is a bit of a disadvantage for Firefly teams. Now, it's not major, but it is worth mentioning. Because Harmony Trailblazer, when enemies are weak to imaginary, especially with less enemies, she does an enormous amount of toughness damage and gauge damage to really break enemies super fast, super, super fast. So in those situations where Harmony Trailblazer's toughness damage is not really a factor, um, characters, you know, well, Firefly in this case, uh, will be a bit on, you know, performing a little bit worse. So <laughs> under ideal situations for Firefly, you know, the enemy is, for, especially free to play Fireflies, the enemy is weak to fire for the 20% additional damage. The enemy is weak to um, imaginary, so that way imaginary trailblazer will, you know, chunk them by a lot. And finally, the enemy is weak to ice because either Pella or Ron May can get maximum value. Otherwise, you know, your team is performing a bit less than optimal. But, you know, obviously, as we can see, it is still, still, you know, a very powerful team in the current meta and in the current situation. And that brings me to another issue that I generally have with these types of break characters. Um, this applies to Boot Hill. This applies to Firefly. Is that there are enemies that just you cannot break their gauges. They have modes where their gauges are invincible so you know obviously if that's the case then you can't do any toughness damage and therefore firefly and boohoo are literally useless against them until you remove their ability their invincibility whatever you want to call it toughness bar immunity to damage i don't even know what to call it um status so yeah that's one thing about her that you know unlike i don't know i guess in, just regular traditional damage dealing characters as well as dot characters that's a disadvantage that these characters have is that they are a bit more matchup reliant however it is worth mentioning that when these characters do damage they do a ton of damage as you can see and generally with less effort and less gear investment when it comes to firefly you don't have to fish for those double crit pieces you fish for break effect you know a little bit of speed literally a little bit depends on the team that you have and yeah so that's really you know a big contrast when it comes to the amount of resources required to actually properly build these characters which is what makes characters like firefly strong and they're going to design content for at least this patch as well as the next patch and probably the patch after that that is favorable slash you know at least neutral positive towards characters like firefly and towards characters like boot hill so yeah i've been yapping a lot but we can see that thanks to all the various miscellaneous buffs and whatever you know all the highly inflated numbers firefly here is able to do a ton of damage <laughs> against kakolia and bam just like that we finish with 1607 action value which gives the other team 1000 action value in order to three star this new gameplay mode So there you go, my complete guide and showcases for Firefly. Personally, I think she's the coolest character in this game, and I love the juxtaposition between her seemingly cute nature and the badassery that is Sam. Let me know what you think about Firefly down in the comments below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.